Samuel Adams was one of the leading figures behind America's struggle for independence from Britain in the 18th century. Adams gave this speech in Philadelphia on August 1, 1776, on gaining the freedom for which he and his colleagues had fought. We are now on this continent to the astonishment of the world. Three millions of souls united in one cause. We have large armies, well-disciplined and appointed, with commanders inferior to none in military skill and superior in activity and zeal. We are furnished with arsenals and stores beyond our most sanguine expectations, and foreign nations are waiting to crown our success by their alliances. There are instances of, I would say, an almost astonishing providence in our favor. Our success has staggered our enemies and almost given faith to infidels. So we may truly say it is not our own arm which has saved us. The hand of heaven appears to have led us on to be, perhaps, humble instruments and means in the great providential dispensation which is completing. We cannot suppose that our opposition has made a corrupt and dissipated nation more friendly to America, or created in them a greater respect for the rights of mankind. We can, therefore, expect a restoration and establishment of our privileges, and a compensation for the injuries we have received from their want of power, from their fears, and not from their virtues. The unanimity and valor which will effect an honorable peace can render a future contest for our liberties unnecessary. He who has strength to chain down the wolf is a madman if he let him loose without drawing his teeth and paring his nails. We have no other alternative than independence, or the most ignominious and galling servitude. The legions of our enemies thicken on our plains. Desolation and death mark their bloody career, whilst the mangled corpses of our countrymen seem to cry out to us as a voice from heaven. Our union is now complete. Our constitution composed, established, and approved. You have now, in the field, armies sufficient to repel the whole force of your enemies and their base and mercenary auxiliaries. The hearts of your soldiers beat high with the spirit of freedom. They are animated with the justice of their cause, and while they grasp their swords, can look up to heaven for assistance. Your adversaries are composed of wretches who laugh at the rights of humanity, who turn religion into derision, and would, for higher wages, direct their swords against their leaders or their country. Go on, then, in your generous enterprise, with gratitude to heaven for past success and confidence of it in the future. For my own part, I ask no greater blessing than to share with you the common danger and common glory. If I have a wish dearer to my soul than that my ashes may be mingled with those of a Warren and a Montgomery, it is that these American states may never cease to be free and independent.
Roger. All right, stay extended. Coming around. All right, I told him to stand by.